and welcome to Paget's Awareness Day 2022. I'm Dr Tori Herridge, an evolutionary biologist at the Natural History Museum in London and friend and supporter of the Paget's Association. Paget's disease of bone is the second most common bone disease after osteoporosis, but many people have never even heard of it. And there is still so much about Paget's disease that we just don't know. But thanks to the work of the Paget's Association, this is changing. And this year, the association is bringing a global perspective to bear on Paget's disease of bone, to challenge the idea that Paget's is solely a British disease, and to explore what we can learn about causes, history, and treatment of Paget's disease by looking beyond the confines of a single country. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to this year's series of video interviews, where I'll be interviewing experts from across the globe to hear their unique perspectives on Paget's disease. For this episode, I'm talking with Dr. Luis Caral Gudino from the University Hospital of Rio Ortega in Spain. Welcome, Dr. Caral Gudino. Hi, hello. Thank you for joining us. If you could start by just saying a little bit about yourself and how you became involved in treating people with Paget's disease. Okay, um, first of all, thank you for the invitation to make this interview. Yes, now I was working in, in Valladolid, that is a, a place uh, two hours by car from, from Madrid. And I have, I have a post of internal medicine and also have an associate professor post in the University of Valladolid. I became involved in Paget bone disease for the very beginning of my specially especially registered period because I, was, I did this period in Salamanca. Uh, yes, in the in the border with Portugal, and um, in the northwest of Salamanca, we have a hot spot of Paget bone disease. And when I did the the special especially registered period, it's not unusual to see patient with Paget bone disease. Even my doctorate in the University of Salamanca, 2004, was a thesis about uh, the uh, cytokines in the pro-inflammatory cytokines and Paget bone disease. So I really uh, attached to this uh, to this disease. You actually jumped ahead and answered one of yeah. my first questions, which was uh, about hotspots. But let's just sort of um, sort of roll back a little bit and talk about Spain more broadly. How common is Paget disease of bone in Spain? Um, it, uh, it, it always we think that uh, British is the origin of Paget bone disease, and this is because in most of the most of the skeletal the skeleton ancient uh, patient with Paget disease are from the British Islands. But to be honest, there is not the oldest ones. We can find also in archaeological sites in Spain or France or even in South America. A skeletal bone disease that suggests to have Paget bone disease even uh, earlier than in the in British Islands. In, in Spain, it's not as frequent as in the United Kingdom, but we have this little hotspot. They are not similar to the little hot, to the hotspot in the United Kingdom, because in Spain, usually are little rural areas. Most of them have to be related with cattle farming or something like that. It, it, it is not an urban disease in Spain. Um, in the past, it's most frequent in, in the center of the country, in the old Castilla. Yeah, I've been looking at a map of Spain from one of your papers, and it shows, I mean, there's obviously quite a few areas with no data at all, but it looks like the coastal provinces have very low incidence, yeah. and then mm -hmm. the internal section starts to get higher, two to three percent, and then within that section, like a donut around Madrid, <laughs> in yeah. the centre of Spain, and then within that, there's all these different hotspots, but they're not connected. Yeah. They're not connected to each other. I mean, you mentioned one of them in the area of Salamanca, but there are other ones as well. I mean, I just thought there was like, what was it, Zamora, uh, Terra del Campos, um, I see, uh, and, and I'm not going to try to pronounce this one. I will try and pronounce it. You can laugh at my terrible accent. I apologize. <laughs> it's a, is, it, is it Guadalajara? Yeah, Guadalajara, yeah. Guadalajara, sorry, here we go. And it just that they're dotted around, aren't they? I mean, is there a connection between them? No, it's not a connection with them. And even in the province of Salamanca, you can find this area that have in the last decades of the 20th century, maybe have a four to six higher prevalence than in the rest of the province. And 
places that are pretty near, maybe 30 kilometers or something like that, have difference in prevalence, really amazing, like having 20 to 30 new cases every 100,000 people, and in the next area, only five new cases, so four to six times uh, higher. So you mentioned already that these are rural areas, it's a disease of yeah. rural communities, which is something I think that was also mentioned by um, Daniela Malotti, who I interviewed about Hajit's disease in Italy. This is a rural phenomenon. But I mean, are we talking, are you then suggesting that environment is more important than genetics here? I mean, are, are there, do you see um, the sort of a high level of familial cases like is seen in Quebec, in Canada or in the UK? Yeah, uh, just now I, I live in uh, one hour by car from Salamanca, it's pretty near, but we are not finding any cases of Hajjitsbon disease. It's, it's pretty infrequent in the area I was working just now because the rural area in, in Valladolid is not exactly the same as in, in Salamanca. Salamanca is more related with cattle farming um, and Valladolid is more related with, with the harvest. It's like the, the wheat, the wheat is, uh, extensions in Spain, this is a tremendous extension of, of, of wheat fields. And um, with the evolution we are seeing of Paget bone disease that is not exactly as severe, as frequent as in the past, the theory of genetic that for sure is, is, is sure. We, we are, especially in, in British uh, people, we are fine genetic markers of the disease. So for sure, there is a component that is genetic, but have to be in addition to this genetic com com component order that seems to be related with environment. And what the th some things that have changed dramatically in the last uh, four to five decades in, in countries are related with, uh, with health things like uh, vaccination, not only for humans, but for animals, like the kind of work. In the past, we are finding uh, people working in the fields, uh, really a strong physical work that is just not now in, in, in any place of, of Spain or United Kingdom, because we have a much, much more sedentary lives with less uh, a skeletal stress to say in one thing um, we have a real change in health of things that in the past uh, we try to uh, associate paget bone disease with some diseases like infectious diseases like param paramix viruses these have not been proved totally never so we don't have any uh, absolute uh, proof or evidence of this relation of the disease with an environmental factor. Do you have any sense yeah. or any, any ideas of what you think might be going on? It seems to be something related with, with environmental, at least in Spain. In the United Kingdom, we, you can work with other theories about genetics uh, and ethnic makeup because in Northwest of England, there is a, a lot of immigration for countries, countries like uh, Pakistan or India that are really low um, prevalence paget bone disease uh, uh, places. But it, the local rural areas in Italy or in Spain have nothing uh, similar to this uh, kind of uh, immigration. There is no change in the ethnic makeup. So you have to work with, uh, with all these um, all these environmental things. In, in the medieval period, when Spain was uh, under the uh, uh, Arabic um, empire, uh, these places of, of Castilia are most of them inhabited. There is no people. And most of the Christians go from the north, from the kingdom of Leon or something like that, and was uh, going to the different place in, in, in the old Castilla. And we tried to connect uh, with this inheritance uh, because maybe this Zamora or Guadalajara or Madrid's uh, focus have the same uh, origin with the new colonization of the Christians after the reconquering of, of, of Spain, but they are not related because there are people from 
pretty different uh, backgrounds. There are Bax, Bax people, there is uh, uh, people from the, the Galicia people. So there is no, uh, it's not possible to make a connection uh, in, in terms of genetics, but it's more uh, clear to make a connection in terms of activities like cattle farming, that most of them have, have this kind of economic activity as the most important. That's really interesting because and I think that feels like a change between something you originally considered which was um, looking at the incidence and prevalence in that one hot spot within Salamanca is it the, the Vitigubino yeah. region yes and um, compared to Salamanca as a whole where you saw not much change in Salamanca as a whole but yeah. you saw a big change like a massive increase in you know between like the 90s and the early 2000s in in Viti Gabino and then a decrease. Yeah, the massive increase in the 90s and uh, 90s is easy to understand because in the past we are not making labs to this patient, and most of the patient with Paget bone disease yes now are uh, diagnosis because we are asking for X-ray for all the reason or we are asking for labs for all the reason. They are not symptomatic patients. And this is because when we start uh, looking for the patient in Bidigudino, we find a lot of patients. Yes, yes, after then, we are finding uh, less and less patients. And at the end, the prevalence in Bidigudino is pretty near that the prevalence in the rest of, of, of Salamanca. And ah. only an environmental factor could explain that. But to be honest, we are we don't know too much about what is this environmental factor. There is a lot of things have been related with uh, with uh, uh, paget bone disease, like uh, untreated water, or like having cattle, or having dogs, dogs or pets in your in your house, or eating uh, unprepared food in, in when you are jungle. But, None of them has been uh, associated in all the different uh, spots and it's not possible to, to make a clear connection. You wrote a really in-depth summary of global trends in Paget disease of bone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Luis Carral Godino from the University Hospital of Rio Ortega. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm delighted to help.